Big Mike here with Hayes Entertainment. Today's episode, we got Northeastern hockey players, Aiden McDonough of the Vancouver Canucks draft pick, and Jaden Struble, Montreal Canadiens draft pick. If you like what we're doing, you hit the subscribe button. Here we go. Hi, I'm Aiden McDonough. I'm on Alan Touch Greatness podcast, and I'm a Vancouver Canucks prospect. Hi, I'm uh, Jaden Struble. I'm on uh, Alan Touch Greatness podcast, and I'm a Montreal prospect. This is the hottest place, 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 the big, big, big name interviews in Vancouver with Ryan Hayes and Big, Big Mike. Over the glove of Hudama makes it three to nothing. The Northeastern makes Merrimack pay for that penalty. I mean, take him in front of the net, take the body out, and there, there's no need for that. And so, I mean, they stuck with it. It was a almost utilized the full two minutes here, but moving the puck around. But rebound, kick save right onto McDonough's stick, and uh, kind of butterflied it up over. Um, How's it going? Hey guys, how you doing? Good, you? Good, good, thanks. Uh, I'm Ryan, by the way. This is Big Mike. Big Mike. How's it going? What's up, guys? Maybe because, hey. of, because, of, because of COVID rules, we're no longer able to record next to each other uh, in Canada. Yeah, no worries. Yep. Um, Aiden, Jaden, uh, thank you guys so much for taking the time today for us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having us. I'm just going to ask you a bunch of questions about hockey, so I'll get started here. Uh, what made you guys get into hockey in the first place, and did you guys play any other sports? I'll start, yeah. I mean, my papa, so my mom's dad, uh, he was my coach. He called me out of skate uh, growing up. But um, So he's a, he's a main reason I'm playing right now. But I played, I mean, I played, like, basketball, lacrosse, baseball, played soccer for a year. I kind of played everything when I was younger and uh, stuck to hockey. It's my favorite. Little League okay. World Series alumni, too. He is. He played in the Little League World Series, so. Oh, beauty, uh, beauty. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, my dad played uh, in high school and uh, was local in Mass and, and played uh, kind of his whole life, his whole family uh, all played up until about high school. So uh, when I was born, kind of the same thing, like just threw me on skates and, and I loved it. Um, but, yeah, I played like soccer growing up. Um, I play a lot of golf now. I played baseball all the way until I played in high school. I was a senior captain. So um, I've kind of bounced around and, and played a bunch of different sports. So, <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, nicknames and uh, what's your guys' favorite jersey number and why? Uh, I mean, people call me Stroobs. Uh, my sub's friends call me Toaster. Um, I mean, uh, my favorite jersey now is number three. Um, used to be 14. Uh, it's a fun story, like, Sebs uh, from Nobles and prep school to prep school. And Sebs had like this black defenseman. He wore number three and he left right when I, I came in. So I just took his number and I've been wearing it ever since. So that's, that's my name. Okay. Um, my nickname, all the boys call me Dunzo. Um, kind of started in high school. Like my last name, like McDonough, like Dunzo. I don't know. I didn't really have him before that. So I'll take, I'll take that. Uh, and then I, yeah, I wear 25 now. Uh, I've worn it since high school and I wore 10 my whole life. That's what my dad wore and my coach, Tony Monty, when I was younger. So I, I love that number, but then I opened up and I went to fair and prep school and I've just kind of worn it ever since. What, what was the biggest transition for you guys uh, going to Northeastern? Um, I mean, mine, mine was probably just uh, like systems and like getting all that stuff down. I mean, I, I mean, all I played, I didn't go to juniors or anything. So, like, I mean, juniors is more structured, but, like, prep, it's just, like, 
I mean, I'd never like chipped the puck off the glass in my life. And then coming here, just like that little, little things that you got to get used to. And like, like big boy hockey, pretty much just like getting used to that was, um, yeah, that was really it though. Like everything else went pretty well. Yeah. I would say similar to him. Yeah. A lot more like systems and, and details and things like that in college that is much more important that you don't really do when you're younger. Um, but yeah, I played a year of junior hockey. So probably my biggest thing was like getting used to going to school again and playing hockey and balancing social life. Like it's just kind of a lot. And um, I think hockey, like obviously guys are a little bit bigger and stronger and faster, but I think that takes like pretty quickly to get used to that it only takes a few games, but part of the overall lifestyle is something that um, took me a little bit to get used to. Yeah, Moss, definitely. What challenges did you come across in getting to where you are today? Uh, I mean, injuries is a big one for me. Uh, you know, I've, I've had some pretty, uh, some like extensive uh, timeout that I've had to deal with. Um, so that's, that's, that's always tough trying to come back and like, um, you know, get back into shape and get ready to play again. But uh, I mean, other than that, it's, you know, hockey's hockey, but um, that's, yeah, that's definitely, it's, it's tough staying, staying healthy. And then once you're hurt, getting back healthy and trying to get back to where you were before that. Yeah, I would say probably similar for me. Uh, injuries I've kind of had a not as extensive as, as Gene, but like I've I've had a you know every year I seem to you know knock on wood, but I've seen to have something that that comes up uh, you know at some point, which I guess everyone kind of deals with. But um, I think that's definitely one thing. And then and even in like middle school, I kind of lost like the love for the game. I guess I just you know played a bunch of different sports and. You know, hockey was always my favorite growing up. And then a couple of years there, it wasn't as fun when everyone else grew and, and I didn't. Um, and then kind of just finding like the love for the game again and enjoying playing hockey and enjoying going to get better. So probably those two things. All right. Who would you guys say the biggest influences are in your career so far? Uh, I mean, biggest one, my pop. Uh, he's coached me all growing up. I obviously wouldn't be playing without him. But then, I mean, like all my young coaches growing up, like, I mean, Mr. McGinnis, Mr. Joyce, Mr. Lovett. Uh, I'm definitely, definitely missing a couple. But they, you know, all those coaches when you're when you're young, and for them to like be able to keep keep you on the right path to like loving the game and like also getting better and like developing and stuff like throughout those years, I think is probably the biggest thing. Cause I mean, once you get to high school and stuff, you're just, you know, you're playing and whatever, but uh, you know, those coaches really did a lot for me and uh, especially growing up, just playing and, you know, sticking with it and, uh, you know, pushing me hard, uh, like as hard as I needed to be pushed to, you know, keep developing. And I mean, everyone's good at different times, but, uh, I think they did a they did a really good job with sticking with me. Yeah, I probably just similar to Strubes, uh My dad probably one of the biggest the biggest influence on me got me into hockey and has kind of been with me uh, through it everything. And you know, I still lean on him a lot to this day. And then, like like you said, the youth coaches. I think we both played uh, for like the same organization for a bit there um, with the So Short Kings, and I had similar coaches to him, Bill Lovett. Uh, Neil Shea. I had Jack Rathbone's dad for probably like seven to eight years. He was my coach. So I think uh, those guys really helped kind of build that foundation of, of how to play the right way and, and how to love hockey. And then once you kind of get older, you, you kind of already have it ingrained in you. So I think those guys were really influential for sure. Take me back to your guys' first goal with the Huskies. And uh, do you guys still have the puck? Uh, yeah, I gave, uh, I gave my Puck to my pop as a Christmas gift, but it's yeah, it's in my house. That's a good one. That was, that was, was your goal. That was yeah, how did it go down? Uh, mine was just mine was we were playing Maine. I mean, Dunzo whipped on a puck <laughs> and it came back to me, and I just kind of slapped it. I, I it was probably on the ice. I think it was on the ice, but it went in. So that yeah, was that was cool. That was, that was a good feeling. Good selly though. Yeah, I get selly too. <laughs> a goal is a goal. <laughs> Um, yeah, I still have the puck. I think it's in my room back home. Um, and yeah, mine was against UMass Amherst at UMass. We, uh, we lost, we weren't playing very well, but I, uh, I got one on the power play kind of back door. Okay. Okay. Hey, right on cue. What's your go-to Sally? Uh, I mean, mine's definitely like, I, I, I almost always go on a knee. I don't know why, but like, I mean, Sebs was like a big, like I was a big arrow guy. Um, 
I mean, sometimes you just like go crazy though. And like, I mean, you, you don't really know what you're doing, but I'd say, I'd say something on a knee. Well, yeah, probably. Um, I don't know. I, I kind of change it up. Like I, I don't really ever think about it. I'm just usually like what really excited and jazzed up and kind of do whatever comes, but usually drop to a knee or, or do something. I've kind of, I had some weird ones last year, but uh, just like usually just too pumped up to kind of think. Yeah, Gadet's from Northeastern as well, correct? Then he loves the Selly. Yeah, yeah, he does. He had uh, a bunch of them here, so. Yeah, yeah same same with another ex-Canuck, uh, Tyler Madden, another uh, Northeastern boy. Yeah, yeah, Madden's uh, not anymore, but, he but yeah, he, he had a couple of crazy Sellys too. He had, like, the canoe and a couple, yeah. like, a couple of crazy ones. Oh, yeah. he pulled out the canoe? I love that one in Beer League. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that one, that one really hurt me when we lost Madden. That guy, that, that, that guy's a beauty. I met him before. Yeah, so, yeah, he's, he's a nice kid. Yeah, really good player too. I think. Uh, I mean, so it's a business, but yeah, he's really good. You guys uh, both had great seasons last year. Aiden uh, finishing with twenty-seven points in thirty-one games, um, ten points in twenty-seven games for you, Jaden, from the back end. Uh, what helped you guys have such a good season? Uh, I mean. For me personally, it was, uh, you know, got off to a slow start, just like, I mean, injuries and I mean, going from, you know, prep to college. Uh, I mean, that was obviously tough, but then I feel like, you know, as I got more comfortable, I'd say like the last, uh, you know, last stretch of games, like after the first 10, I feel like I was pretty, pretty in and comfortable. And that's, that's when the points started to pick up too. And um, I mean, really it is just being comfortable out there. And I mean, once you know the systems and you don't have to think about them too much, uh, makes it a lot easier because you're playing hockey. And, I mean, there's obviously a point where, you know, coming in as a freshman, you're kind of nervous to do different things, and uh, maybe you won't, you know, play your game as much as you should. But, I mean, after a couple games and, you know, a couple times, uh, you know, chatting with the boys and hanging out with the boys and you get comfortable enough, it's just, you know, a comfort comfortability is definitely the biggest thing, I feel. Yeah, me too. I think um, you know, the older guys helped us out a lot. Uh, we were really close to the senior class and, the junior class last year and I think they helped us out a ton because everyone when you come in um, to a school like Northeastern everyone's a good player so I think the quicker as quick as you can get like comfortable and get used to all the boys and and feel good on the ice and confident that's kind of when you start to see you know your, your production start to go up a little bit and I think the coaches did a really good job with us last year we had 11 freshmen so we were leaned on pretty heavily and probably just like the coaches and uh, the older guys in the team probably, probably the biggest thing that helped us for sure. And obviously a huge accomplishment, uh, winning the Beanpot Championship. What was that like? Uh, Aiden, I know you set up the double overtime winner. And uh, Jaden, unfortunately, you obviously didn't play in the game because of an injury. Yeah, well, you yeah. Can go first, you play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Uh, you know, growing up around here, that's kind of a dream come true to even play in that game. And I've been going to those games since I was in first grade all the way till my senior high school every year. And um, to be out there with so many friends and family in the stands and, and to win – you know, the way we did, um, it was a crazy game, but just to win, no matter how you win, it was, was awesome. And, um, it was probably one of the best craziest games I've ever been a part of. And one of the best, uh, you know, nights after we won. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah. That, I mean, for me watching it perspective, like that was, that was like the worst thing ever. Cause I mean, you sat through overtime, you sat through the game and like, you could, I couldn't do anything about it. I was on crutches watching like that sucked. It was, I mean, one goal and like your whole, I would have been like shattered. Like, um, yeah, but um, it was definitely fun. Like as soon as they scored, like just like crutching it on them. Yeah, just like as fast as I could. And like, I mean, that, <laughs> I mean, I mean, after it was fun too, but that was, uh, that was definitely, that was best, best nights I've had so far uh, college. Do you, guys awesome. have a, do you guys have a favorite sports hero? Sports hero. Like all, ever, any sport ever. Yeah, a, any sport. I don't know. That's a that's a tough question. Hey, that's what we're here for, the Julia guys, eh? Um, I don't know. Can we go back to that one? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yep. we'll circle back. We'll let Mike ask it next time. Okay. <laughs> Who do you guys uh, mirror your game after or try and play like? Uh, I mean, I, I really like Seth Jones. Um just like offensively and he's just a big body, you know, he knows how to move the puck, knows how to defend. But I mean, there's like a lot of guys that I don't really like to stick to one, one particular player. Cause I think there's a lot of good, 
things to be had from, you know, a mix of different players. But, uh, I mean, he's probably the closest thing that I would, uh, I would say. Yeah, we, we get that answer quite a bit. People always like to say, like, I play a little bit like this, a little bit like that. Yeah, very. I mean, you, you need some of your own, like, personal thing in there, too. But you, I like to, you know, take a little, you know, a couple things from a couple guys and, you know, figure it out. But Yeah, me too. I think, um, especially we're, we're still young, like, our games are still evolving. So, like, you know, just watching other guys and, and seeing what they can do on the ice. Uh, like, we're you know, still trying to figure out what we're trying to be. Um, you know, for the rest of our careers. But I like to watch uh, Jamie Ben. He's probably one of the guys. He's, he's a big forward, likes to score goals and get around the net. And, um, you know, he's a really good stick. Uh, and he's a big boy and isn't afraid to play physical when he has to. So, and yeah, yeah, good good choice. Yeah, and he's from around here. You know, he seems to always light up Vancouver, though. Like, <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, and for, for me, I, I'm much of a Brad Marchand type. You are, yeah. Yeah, I'm the I'm the biggest piece of shit in beer league hockey. <laughs> yeah, I, I like watching Brad Marchand too. I think he uh, he's a really good stick. I mean, aside from the other stuff that he does, that I think makes him really effective. But I think he's yeah. kind of underrated in, in how skilled he is and like how many puck battles and stuff like that he can do with his stick. So I, I like I like all the dirty stuff. I don't like the licking people though. That shit <laughs> that shit's not right. Yeah, that's that's a little too much. Yeah. <laughs> do you guys have any uh, pregame meals or rituals? Uh, yeah, I have, uh, I mean, I just eat, we have like catered, uh, catered stuff for pregame. So I'll just have like pasta, salad, and maybe a couple pieces of chicken or something like nothing, nothing crazy, but it's really whatever I'm feeling that day. But, and then rituals is like, that's a different story, but we'll keep that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm like pretty superstitious. I'm not gonna lie. So I usually, yeah, like you said, we get the pregame meal at the rank. That's usually like chicken and uh steak and stuff like that salad pasta and then it kind of changes year by year but um i like to get to the rink early and stick handle on the ice uh take my sticks stretch i usually get a smoothie on the way to the rink yeah i got a ton of them but i'm pretty (laughs) everyone everyone usually says chicken parm yeah no we don't have that but the stuff we get the rink's really good so we can't We got a couple of guys that have had some weird rituals. One guy uh, puts on his uh, his left uh, leg pad on his right, his right on his left. He's been doing that since he was a kid, and he's just stuck with it. That's nuts. I feel like that'd be like that'd be so, that'd be so uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you would think so. Except for his knees have probably worn in the knee pads. They probably <laughs> like they've already shifted. Like uh, your skates even mold your feet eventually. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that kid's supposed to be pretty big, big name too, Connor Geeky. Okay, yeah, I don't know who that is. But I mean, if he's okay, big, yeah. Maybe, maybe he's fast. We should maybe it help my my boots a bit if I do that. So maybe. Hey, hey you're, uh, you're doing good. Aiden, uh, take me back to draft day, uh, where you were drafted by the Vancouver Canucks, 195th overall, and uh, welcome to Vancouver, buddy. Yeah, hey, going on the wall. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, yeah, I was actually on vacation uh, on an island off the coast of Boston with a bunch of my uh, like my three or four best friends from home. We were out to out to lunch, and I wasn't really paying attention to it because I didn't get picked the year before, and, and I and I washed it all day. So I just thought it would be good to get my mind off it. I wasn't really starting to get picked, and um, yeah, my friends came running out of the bathroom with their phone going nuts, and my dad just called me and said you just got picked, and uh, it was really cool to have them there with me and. Uh, we got, got to celebrate, have some lunch, and then I actually had to take like, the first ferry home that night and head out to Vancouver in the morning. So it was a pretty quick uh, 24 hours, but uh, but yeah, it was awesome. Did you know they were interested, or did you talk to them much before the draft? Um, I, I played for uh, one of the scouts, like Vinny Montalano. Uh, he's a you know a USHL Midwestern, like Eastern scout. Um, when I was younger, and I kind of knew him a little bit, and um i talked with him the year before a little bit and then i actually saw him at an applebee's my in my draft year and he would just we just talked like a normal you know how's it going caught up because i hadn't seen him in a long time and um he just asked me about some guys like in the league and on my team that were draft eligible and um but that was really it nothing really about me and uh so yeah i guess um you know i talked to i talked to judd brackett recently before he got uh He's with Minnesota, and I guess he was the one that kind of did all the work behind the scenes, even though I never met him uh, talked to him, which is pretty cool. But um, so, yeah, I guess those two guys really helped me. So, 
Of okay, course, and of course it was Judd. That guy's he he he's a hell of a talent at finding young kids that are gonna go places. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, he has a good track record. So yeah. Did you know much about Vancouver, or had you ever been here before, other than coming for uh, rookie camp? Obviously. No, I um, I mean, I probably hate to hear this, but I was a Bruins fan growing up. So oh. uh, <laughs> twenty eleven <laughs> was the only really the only really. Uh, knowledge I really had about it, and um, I knew me. I, I grew up playing with Jack Rathbone, so he was one of my best friends, still is. And uh, I know he got picked by them the year before, yeah. kind of like the only real knowledge I had. And uh, but no, I never been out to Western Canada at all. Um, so yeah, going out to camp and, and seeing the city and everything out there was, was really cool. We're hoping I actually, Jack makes the team next year. I hope so too. I, I think there's a spot for him. I hope so. I don't really know, you know, what their plan is and, you know, if there's spots and stuff, but I mean, he's, he's nasty. He's, he's a really good player. And I think he'll be in the NHL really soon, if not next year. And, you know, we've all played against him and skated with him and a ton and he's really good. So. Perfect. Great kid. How did you feel your first camp went? I actually showed up and uh, watched a bit of it. It was awesome. The intensity was crazy. Yeah, it was uh, it was a lot of battling, you know, right up from the get go. It was really fast paced and really competitive. Um, but yeah, I thought I thought I fit in. Um, I don't think uh, I thought I, you know, I showed pretty well. I think your first camp uh, with a new organization it was, you know, kind of getting your feet wet and you're not really comfortable with with the staff and with everything. And um, but having Tyler Madden was my roommate there, so that helped to, to know him before and he kind of kind of showed me the ropes as best he could but um you know i'm really excited to hopefully get out there you know whenever the next camp may be because i feel like i'd be able to do a lot better just a bit more comfortable and um you know a bit more ready and prepared so hey jaden jaden obviously congrats uh being drafted the montreal canadians 46th overall taking back to that day uh that was that was crazy that was a good day um i was with my family um yeah, i attended draft in vancouver and i mean I wasn't expected to get picked uh, by Montreal, to be honest. But um, you know, as soon as the name got called, it was it was just a breeze. Like walking, walking up, and you know, getting the jersey, going behind the scenes, and doing all the media stuff it was uh, it was really fun. I mean, obviously, um, you know, we had a, I had a good time while I was out there after too, and so that was uh, it was memorable. And you know, I'm glad to glad to be a part of uh, you know, that organization. But yeah, I, I wasn't expecting it at all, but. Definitely. Yeah, we actually went, both of us went to the draft and it was probably one of the funnest things I've ever done. I kind of thought to myself, like as a fan, like I've never been to a draft before. We should go check this out. So we went and uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty yeah. cool. We, yeah. all, we also tried to meet the people ahead of the time. Like everybody was staying at that hotel yeah. and we, we, it was nice to get a chance to like see everybody and you meet them and you meet actually the people and the kids beforehand. Like, Pod Colson's even a guy that I I met at the draft, and yeah. another great Canuck prospect who I'm never probably in my life going to get a chance to meet again. I was in the right spot at the right time. Yeah, yeah, that's no, really was, cool. Yeah, it was a crazy day, and definitely, I mean, again, you know, top top whatever nights or days of my life. So perfect, hell of a good city. What's you guys' favorite road barn? Favorite road, uh. I mean, I would say Maine just because of, like, how, like, packed and loud it was, but I did get hurt first Maine, so I don't like it. But, um, <laughs> yeah, fuck Maine. <laughs> but other than that, if I didn't get hurt and we didn't lose, I'd probably say Maine because it is electric. Yeah, I agree. Maine is electric. And um, same thing, we lost, and you, it's a tiny rink, and they're really heavy, so we got hit a ton. The boards are, like, concrete. Um, but I'd probably say playing at BC or BU. I think uh, when you play against those guys, there's a lot of fans and, and family in the stands that you know, and going up, going to those games uh, as a kid and being able to play at those ranks is really cool. And I think there's just a little added intensity when you play against, uh, you know, your crosstown rivals. So I would say, I'd say Providence for me too, because I knew like I mean, half the stands when we went and played. So that was, that was cool too. That always makes it extra special, obviously. How did you uh, figure your camp went with Montreal? And did you know much about the city at all before going there? No, I didn't know anything about it. I actually had pretty, I had a pretty tough camp. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was fun though. Like it was a good time. Uh, I, you know, I met a lot of guys that, you know, a lot of good guys that I, you know, wouldn't have met. I met, uh, you know, Aiden Primo and Jordan Harris. I, I obviously didn't get to play with Cream, but um, 
Uh, I mean, I knew Jordan, so that was good. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun and, um, you know, I'm looking forward to the next one, but, uh, yeah, it was <laughs> tough, tough, tough going, but maybe the next one will be better. You, you know, you're going to have to learn French, right? Yeah, I, <laughs> I took, I took French in like seventh grade. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll slip a couple words by, but. Our other <laughs> room in Montreal speaks yeah. French. Maybe he'll help us out. Yeah, oh, there you go. You, know, you don't have to worry in Vancouver. We only got like a. Five percent, I would say, population speaks French. Oh, that's yeah, good. Montreal's a little heavy with French. But... Yeah, it's almost that. There, there's only like ten percent English in in Montreal. Yeah, that's tough. Jaden, you were an absolute beast at the combine, uh, finishing first in uh, five tests. If my stats are right here, uh, what contributed to that? Uh, I mean, I worked worked at EPS. Um, you know, good amount of my summers, and I mean, I trained. Uh, that pretty much that whole summer for the combine. Um, and, you know, that was obviously helpful, but I mean, there was a lot of, there was a lot of things that I felt like uh, training didn't really have anything to do with it. Like, I mean, like bench and stuff like that, but um, there was a couple where, you know, the training definitely paid off, but um, yeah, it was exciting. It definitely helped me too, just uh, before the draft to kind of, you know, set one, set one more tone and like, you know, show, show some, you know, all the GMs and everything, uh, you know, a little bit more about me and definitely helped me. And I think, you know, obviously there's a bunch of interviews that go along with that and those helped me out too. So glad uh, it wasn't a COVID year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the kids kind of got screwed this year. Yeah. Hey, uh, what's what, the craziest question you ever got at the uh, draft? Uh, like, and what would it, if you were an animal, what would you be? Because that seems to be the answer we get from a lot of people. One, That's one of them. There was a couple like there was a couple weird ones. A lot of a lot of GMs love to ask if you smoke weed. That's a big one. Um, I don't know. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big one. There's a I, I got I got a lot of like weird ones like like the animals and stuff like if you were this what would this but if I was an animal I'd be a bear. That's my answer. Uh, how are you? Aiden, do you remember any weird ones you got? Um. I think a lot – my line mate in high school uh, got drafted first round by Philly, Jay O'Brien, and a lot of people were just asking me about him if he smoked weed too. Um, and love, it's love crazy. To yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I think that the younger generation smokes a lot. But, uh, but no, I didn't get the animal one, but I'm just trying to think. I guess I I'd, got a ton of I'd probably be like a – try to be like a, a lion or a cheetah. To get some extra- we get that a lot. I think lion's probably our number one choice we get. Maybe just add an extra step to my game, which I think would help. We always, okay, okay. we always get the king of the jungles, whatever that might be. Actually, yeah. no one ever said gorilla yet. No, they yeah. haven't. I'm okay. more of a toucan Sam. <laughs> <laughs> With a beak like that, I get it. Uh, yeah. I know. <laughs> this guy busting my chops and shit. <laughs> hey, uh, where's my next one here? Hey, what's uh, your favorite sports hero? We're circling back. Back. Uh, favorite sports hero. I mean, you have to go first. Um, it should be easy one. You guys, it's the fucking. Who's your favorite sports guy? What guy did you have pictures on your walls of? Oh, maybe Bobby Orr. I mean, every kid from New England. Good has choice. Them. Good choice. Yeah, I had a Bobby Orr. I met him at uh, like when I was really young at uh at actually Saint Sebastian's Pierce High School. He had a game and um. He just like gave me his autograph, and then I ended up getting him like a picture. Everyone has that picture of him flying through the air. So maybe okay. yeah, because I think he did a didn't do a ton for for me, but like my dad, I know like his, his family like started playing hockey like because of Bobby Orr and like those that Bruins. So you know that yeah. could have helped. Actually, like thinking back to it, I'd say mine was uh, Joe Thornton. I used to I used to absolutely love him. I used to have like a bobblehead of him and like stuff with Joe. So that was that's mine. Hey, one of the worst – hang on, Mike, I got this. One of the worst trades in my life I ever did is I traded a Bobby Orr autograph that I met in person and signed for a Pavel Bure poster just because I loved Pavel – not signed. Not, not signed. I, was, I was like 15 years old with the love for Pavel Bure and this, who's Bobby Orr? I'm a young little kid. This is dad's favorite autograph, not mine. Yeah. It, it all makes sense. You're still not that sharp. <laughs> hey fuck you <laughs> hey who was uh the huskies dj or pump-up guy on the team um 
the DJ last year was uh, Zach Solo before games. Um, yeah. But I don't know. If that, yeah, I don't know if the music was pumping us up. Uh, <laughs> uh, Matt Thompson had pretty good ox. Yeah, yeah he usually pop on sometimes. He's a kid, uh, sophomore last year. I thought he'd get the boys going. I don't know who it's going to be this year, but probably Joe. What, what's your personal highlight or low light for both of you? In, uh, in hockey? Or, or it doesn't even have to be. Um, uh, my my highlight's probably, like, I don't know. This is, like, the only goal I remember from when I was younger. Like, I scored, like, a OT winner when my papa was a coach to win, like, a tournament. And that was, like, I just remember, like, selling. Like, I was on the ground. Like, my papa came over and was, like, shaking me. And, like, <laughs> that's like, probably, like, my most memorable memory. But, um... Low light. I mean, any one of my injuries. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, you tell me you have none. <laughs> um, highlight would probably be winning the bean pot last year. Uh, that was, like I said, just amazing. Um, in low, uh, my senior year, we lost in the finals in overtime in the prep school championship. Uh, that was pretty pretty devastating to go out like that. Um, we dominated over time too, and they had one shot and scored. So that was tough to kind of end my high school career like that. So, what's you guys, what's been your sorry, sorry, Mike? Sorry, what's been your guys's go to uh, quarantine snack? Uh, we try to keep it healthy here, actually. Yeah, just, just went shopping, just went shopping. We keep it, yeah, we uh, we we make food like every day. Uh, we don't really snack. As much as I used to. Not we, well. We don't make any food. Our other two roommates yeah. cook, and we. Uh, <laughs> That's the way to go. You don't really snack on anything like it's smoothies, pretzels, yeah, yeah. Like pretzels and stuff. Okay, I, I, I'm, I like beef jerky, so I, I guess we are something I've been snacking on a lot. But do the yeah, other beef jerky solid? Do the other two roommates also play on the team? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay, yeah. so they don't they dorm you guys all together? Yeah. 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 Riley Hughes and uh, Jeremy Bushley. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, how do you guys uh, describe your game or what do you guys bring to the table? I mean, I'd say, uh, you know, I'm just like, a, I'm good skating D, uh, you know, offensive capabilities. Uh, obviously, like physicality is a big part of my game too, but I think just kind of like a mix of everything, uh, you know, a good, good mix of everything, uh, you know, what I, what I kind of bring. Um, I'd say like I'm a, a big uh, power forward who likes to score goals and uh, shoot the puck and, and get to the net, um, make plays for my teammates and get to open areas. I think, um, you know, all of our, both of our games are still have a lot of work to do and we're still kind of working on it every day. What, uh, or I guess our identity is, but I think we're all kind of just trying to get better at, at everything right now. So hopefully in you know, a couple of years, we'll have that question answered, but um, yeah, big power forward likes to score goals. I got one that's not written down here. Mike's going to make me delete it. But um, uh, what's a good chirp about each other? <laughs> uh, good one. that kind of goes with his nickname is Dunzo No Funzo. We've been saying that for, uh, <laughs> for a little bit. Um, um, I guess I'd just, if I had a chair of shoes, would try to just thumb that he's just kind of like messy and that he needs to clean this shit up because uh, – <laughs> Sometimes it's uh, some trash or some stuff laying around the room that happens to be from him. So I don't try to say that. Well, everyone, ha everyone has that one roommate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. He's he's our guy. So. <laughs> hey, fellas, uh, we can't thank you guys enough uh, for taking the time today for us. Uh, we really appreciate you guys taking your time and coming on for us. And we're huge fans of yours, and we can't wait to cheer you guys on for the rest of your guys' careers. Yeah, thank no, thank you. Thanks we for really having, appreciate us. You having us. Uh, it was awesome.